what would you say are your most important results in the study? Right. So I think um, if you think about it, we have uh, these farmers and hunter gatherers living in uh, northern Europe, uh, and they're living there for a long period of time, say a thousand years. And um, we know from archeolo the archaeological record that these two cultures are rather uh, distinct. So it is really two different groups that are living separately. One group is um, doing farming, and the other group is doing hunting and gathering. And what we've seen, we've genotyped and looked at basically between 1% and 3% of the genomes of these individuals. And what we see is that the farmer is very di different genetically from the hunter-gatherers. So they're, they're as distinct as northern Europeans today compared to Mediterranean Europeans. So the hunter-gatherers resemble mostly northern Europeans and the farmer resembles um, Mediterranean Europeans of today. Okay. Uh, the spreading of agriculture has been a debate among scientists for almost a hundred years. Uh, why is this question so important and fascinating? Right, so, so if you think about it, um, like the, the introduction of agriculture is probably the basis of our modern civilization. So without uh, moving from a farming or from a hunting and gathering way of life to a farming way of life, we would not have the civilization that we have today. So that's kind of uh, step one. And the second um, thing that fascinates me is to understand how these like large scale ideas or transitions of ideas uh, come about in the human population, for example, in Europe. So how does the technology and ideas of farming spread from one part of the world, say the Middle East, across Europe? Uh, is it actually people who are moving from the place where the ideas arose? Or is it by word of mouth, for example, where it's ideas that spread to, to people that are living uh, and not moving as much uh, between one part of the world and to another part of the world. So I think that's the fascinating story um, with the Neolithization and, and our results that uh, we have this group of farmers that are genetically distinct can tell us something that it in fact is people who are moving with the ideas, with their farming practices to the north of Europe. Yeah. How does your study differ from uh, others in this field? Right, so, so there's maybe three points. So first of all, we're actually looking at ancient uh, individuals. We're looking at the farmers and the hunter, -gather hunter and gatherers that are living in, these, uh, in northern Europe, say, 5,000 years ago. Uh, so it's not looking at modern data and trying to make inferences about past historic events. Uh, and the second, uh, second point here uh, is really that we're, we're focusing on um, the autosomal parts of the human genome. So we have hundreds of thousands of independent loci instead of previous studies that have looked at mitochondrial and Y-chromosome markers, which is basically one or two uh, markers. So we have much, much, much greater power to, um, to make these predictions or make these uh, or find these, these results. Uh, so those, those are maybe the, the, the two most important ones. But a third one is also that we're actually looking at multiple individuals. So many of these ancient DNA studies, although it's a lot of work to get uh, information from ancient DNA, we in fact have four individuals. So there, there's four Neolithic individuals from two different cultures, and it's not only one single individual that yeah. we're looking at. But for, uh, for me, uh, it's still only four individuals. Right. How can you gather so much uh, knowledge from only four individuals. Right, right. So, so here we had to, to come up with some creative ideas of analyzing the data. So we're getting quite a lot of data from each individual. Uh, and it's not overlapping uh, data in most cases from these four individuals. So what we do is to, to use a scaffold of modern genetic DNA or modern genetic variation from Europeans and Middle Easterns. So in that way, we can use that as a scaffold and then we can look at where in this kind of map of genetic diversity uh, among Europeans and the Eurasians does the hunter-gatherers fall and the farmer fall. So we're basically using, uh, we're using a scaffold from, from modern data. Um, the fact that the skeletons are very old, about 5,000 years old, right. is, is that a big uh, obstacle in this kind of study? Yes, it is. I mean, it, it's, of course, it's more difficult to get uh, authentic DNA from uh, ancient material that, are, that is 5,000 years old. Uh, but that's probably, in fact, the, the, the less or the smaller of the two problems. The bigger problem uh, is to be sure that the DNA that we get out of these old ancient bones 
is in fact coming from that ancient bone and not from me or from any other scientist ha who has been working with it. And since we're working with um, material that is uh, Europeans that are 5,000 years old, the risk of contamination is of course great. So we have to be very, very careful to, to avoid contamination. And one of the things that we've been developing in this study is to, uh, to fish out the molecules that have specific ancient DNA damages. So in that case, we're 100% sure that these molecules are actually authentic and old. And then we can see that our results um, also produce when we only look at these molecules that have these specific ancient DNA uh, damages. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when you look at those four individuals, how did you know that one was a farmer and the other three were hunter-gatherers? Right, so, so that's where we take help with, uh, with our archaeological friends, uh, Jan Stuo, who's part of this study. Um, so, so there's quite a lot of work uh, from archaeologists who uh, associate the remains of these uh, individuals with the burial context. So, for example, the farmers, they build large megalithic, like big stone structures and bury their people under those um, big megalithic structures, whereas uh, the hunter-gatherers don't do that. And there's also very distinct pottery, uh, different pottery between these two different groups, and there's animal remains that are different associated with the two different groups. So there's a number of uh, ways of making sure that a certain individual uh, is coming from a particular culture, in, in addition to um, that you can actually look at the skeleton and uh, make chemical analysis and make sure that this individual was born in the area where it actually was uh, buried later on. Yeah. Um, now you have sorted out some questions about the spreading of agriculture in Northern Europe. Um, do you think that there are other historical processes that uh, could be illuminated using your methods? Sure, sure. I think, I mean, this is not limited to, uh, to the Neolithic uh, process or Neolithization. It's really um, a method that can be applied to, to any historical or prehistorical event where you have humans or any other, uh, uh, actually, species or any, uh, uh, well, any material that uh, contains DNA. Um, so you can investigate basically any question that you're interested in when you have ancient material uh, and when you want to make the extra effort of trying to get ancient DNA out of your, your material. Do you hope that other researchers will use your methods to... Yes, of course. We, yeah. of course we would like uh, uh, others to kind of follow in this way of uh, getting multiple individuals and looking at the autosomes from, uh, from ancient material and trying to make better predictions about historical and prehistorical events. Yeah, and what about you and your colleagues? What will you do next? Right, so, so one thing that we're um, doing right now is to try to go deeper into um, the genomes of, of these four individuals. So we want to get complete coverage of, of the, these genomes to, to be able to tell which genetic variants uh, the farmers carry and which genetic variants the, um, the hunter-gatherers carry and compare that to, for example, modern populations. That would be a very interesting follow-up. And of course, we would like to increase the sample size uh, of these groups and include other groups with distinct cultures from, say, this period of time uh, in future studies.